So uh, just being scriptural, that we have in the plenary, the verbal plenary of most of the Bible, we can see that these views that were not necessary, they are actually, to me, they're demonic. Because they take you away from the direct relationship with God. And if the direct relationship with God is believing that God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. And he said it in the Bible. No matter if they created these all these different Bibles, had he said it, should he not do it? Had he spoken it, should he not make it good? So why do you need someone to tell you that he didn't really mean to say what you're reading? And all of these other views will lead you to, they, they take you in the direction to believe that what God said, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. And it's probably for the doctrine, for reproof, correction, for instruction of righteousness. So why do you need someone to tell you that God didn't really mean what he said or he didn't quite mean it that way? And you need me to tell you what he forgot to say or he didn't say it clearly enough for you to digest it. And that's the satanic deception. But let's look at that satanic deception. Isaiah 14. Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 through 14. Isaiah chapter 7, verses 12 through 14. 7 of 14. Isaiah chapter, I'm sorry, chapter 14, verses 12 through 14. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut, 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 cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast sinned thine heart, I will ascend upon heaven, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation of church in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Not greater than the Most High, God. But he'll be like him. And how will he be like him? He will have to have a congregation of people who believe what he wants them to believe. And when he has this congregation of people who believe how he likes them to believe, they will believe that they are worshiping God when they're actually worshiping and glorifying Satan. Through their different views of the Word of God. The synopsis of what, uh, well, a review of what we uh, first opened this study with. In the garden, Adam had a direct relationship with God, the Creator. He chose to not have that direct relationship. 
And we know the circumstances of the story. But what happened is he had a direct relationship, and he took it upon himself to not have a direct relationship. And throughout the scriptures, this has been the case with everyone throughout the scriptures. They thought that they had a better way of having a direct relationship with God. Everyone. And basically what they did is they wanted to create their own religion. Because they thought it would help to have a better relationship or a more direct relationship with God. And before we go any further, let's look at how they're spoken of in Romans 1. He describes it better than I can. This forsaking of a direct relationship. It's peculiar. It's peculiar to me because to, the, the cleverness of Satan is this the direct relationship with God is too simplistic. You have to have it, you have to make it more dramatic and more profound so that you can have this feeling of, of so that you can have a feeling of having a relationship because I can feel it. I can feel that I'm having a relationship. You can't have that relationship and just have a doctrinal understanding of that relationship. You have to have a feeling. It has to be an emotional feeling. You have to be overcome. And selling all of these all, all of these organizations, they sell that's what they sell. An emotional experience. Romans chapter one. Let's read all of this. Verses 18 through 26. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has chosen unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. And here, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish shine was darkened. Because when they knew God, they glorified him not. It was never good enough. That was never good enough to just know God, just to have this direct personal relationship with God. That wasn't good enough. And they weren't thankful. They became vain in their imagination. That's something I can do to really enhance this relationship. There is something I can do to enhance my relationship with That's what Satan is told. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. They changed the glory of the uncorruptible God, uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible bird, made corruptible man, to birds, four-footed beasts, and creeping things. Isn't that going on today? To, to, show my, to show my appreciation and my direct relationship with God, I have to create images. I have to, I pass by, well, every Sunday I pass by this first, this, this uh, 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 person's house, and they're Catholics, and they have a dial house. It, it's every, it's still there, it never moves. They have a dial house with a little dial. And it's not about this uh, Catholic holiday. This is every day they have this thing in front of their house, a little dial house on the ground, and a, and a little dial. And, and during this, uh, this uh, Santa Claus time of the year, they've decorated with things. This is exactly what they're doing. Corruptible man. <laughs> I'm mad, but it's not funny. Images. Made images. And but she's been trained to do that. 
That's a she. Someone has told her they've given her a dynamic approach to the scriptures. It's a, she's, she's been trained to believe this. She doesn't believe that God is not a man. You should not. She believes that the organization is not an organization that would lie to her. Because her mother, her tradition, her, this has been going on for over 1,800 years. That you, you just can't just simply believe God. Your understanding has to be enhanced so that you have a, a more profound relationship with God. And, and it teaches you that you can, you can even feel it. Wherefore God gave them up to uncleanness to the lust of their own hearts. And designing their own bodies among themselves, between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie. Who changed the truth of God into a lie? Who is that? A person that has these different, different views of the Bible. They have changed the truth of God into a lie. Either <laughs> he believed this you, either you have a existential view of the Bible, either you have a dynamic view, a natural view, a spiritualized view, or you have a partial view. All of those are lies. You don't have the word of God because he's not a man in Jesus. He said all scriptures given by inspiration of God. But you have, you have different views. That's not the inspiration of God. <laughs> Amen. I mean, I mean I mean, what's wrong with just believing what you're reading? Even in these uh, other Bibles, this is just more reliable than the King James Bible to me, from what I study. This is more reliable than those other things. But they cannot escape the truth of the Word of God, no matter how many Bibles, different Bibles, look at some of the Christians. They cannot escape it. We were talking about Israel earlier. No matter how they try to corrupt and pretend that they're Israel, no matter how they do it, they cannot escape Israel. They have, and they cannot escape the Apostle Paul. They have to. They go in there and they harvest information from Paul's, Paul's uh, epistles, and harvest information from, from uh, uh, information God has given from the nation of Israel. But they cannot escape God's plan for the nation of Israel, for his plan. And they cannot escape and explain and be of the same mutual faith, be of the mutual faith of Paul. They can't do it. They can't do it. But they can do it, I'm sorry. They can do it to many people by using these different views. <laughs> I was listening to the, every now and then I listen to a, these people calling themselves a nation of Israel. Yeah. And they'll take a verse. But they just not only them. They'll take just one verse and give it application. Give it application for the day. And it's solid. It can work. But they don't give it the context. Because if they did, they can't use that verse. And it's in Paul's epistles. But let's go get further. We've established that. The fact of the matter is, man from Adam has rejected a direct relationship with because he thinks that he can enhance this relationship with God by introducing theories and works of his own to enhance that relationship. God's information about relationship with him is not good enough. It needs to be fine-tuned. So he creates organizations, he creates 
when he would obey the Romans. Corruptible things. The relationship has been marred. Say again. The relationship has been marred. Marred? Yeah, it's been. Damn Not marred. When, <laughs> when he does those things. Romans 1 describes it best, better than I do, better than I can. When he does those things, verse 23, when he does those things, he changes the glory of the uncorruptible God into images made like to corruptible man, to birds, four-footed beasts, and creepy things. Rather than having a direct relationship with God, what do you need with dolls? Like I was telling you about that, that person had that house, that little doll house in front of her, in front of her home. It's Catholic. And she has a, a female doll that she calls Mary. The dolls. And when it rains, they get wet, soggy, and mud fall. And she has to go up there and clean up the dolls so that they look nice. But see, when you believe in God, it's not a man. You don't have to clean up no dolls. You have to clean up your mind, my mind, when I read his information. It's that simple. But man is so powerful, Satan is so powerful through his ministers who change the truth of God into a lie, that they can create ways for you to be seduced into their method, they're talking about your relationship with God. It's your focus, we want you to have a relationship with God and have your focus on God, but the focus becomes on you, the person, the dog. And that's the idea. Change the focus, the direct relationship with God, and you can have a better relationship if the focus is transferred to you. You. It's something you do that can enhance your relationship with God by your own doing. Not anything that God told you to do, but by your own imagination. Let's move through this. And everything that we made, this is consistent throughout the letter that God has wrote, given to the world, not only to the world. John, Gospel of John, chapter 11, verses 47 and 48. I just saw, I just saw uh, this morning, I happened to go into Facebook and so this morning, uh, someone had posted up. It's you know, it's so it's man, it's so powerful. Satan is so powerful. Someone, a Christian, had posted a, a prayer on Facebook for their God, their God, they had, that they had been trained to believe. Uh, spiritualized scriptures and both of these go together, all the time go together. They have changed the truth that God gave the nation, nation Israel concerning miracles, science, miracles, and wonders. And they transferred them to today. And that person had a prayer on Facebook. I didn't have time to go there, man, get there. some information. I'm hoping it would be there when I get home. But they said they a Christian, they said they pray to God that uh, he remove this COVID virus and heal everybody that was sick and everybody that might get sick. And, and you know, that was the essence of, the, of their prayer. It was a Christian, it wasn't a Muslim or atheist, you know. It was a Christian who had been taught to believe that those signs gifts given to the nation Israel were effective and applicable 
to whatever organization that they belong to today. And they were sincere. They posted it on Facebook. See, they don't believe God. They believe the organization, but the organization they told them what God meant to say. If it's in the Bible, it means you too. And it works. Because they have shifted the focus from a relationship with God and made that person believe that the relationship is about you. The Bible is about you and what you can get from it for you. It's not how you can get in on what God is doing, but how you can get from God what you want. And that's the way. That's the way the game works. And it's and it's it seduces, it holds people, it holds them, it holds them. Throughout, throughout this book, it's consistent. See, Gospel of John, chapter 11, verses 47 and 48. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council. The chief priests and Pharisees this religious organization and their leaders. And said, what do we do? This man does miracles. This man has proved who he is by miracles that he performed. Jesus. But I don't care that he is who he claims to be by the miracles. He's interfering with our hustle. If we let him bust alone, all men will believe on him. And the Romans will come and take away both our place. And I mean, what, what place? They come and destroy our, our man-made church. Because they don't want confusion in Palestine, the Romans. And this man is going to make the Romans come and destroy our church because of what he's been preaching and teaching and they said what he's been preaching and teaching is true because he proved it by performing these miracles. But we, I don't care what he did, I don't care about who he is, but I ain't gonna let him interfere with my church, that's Satan. <laughs> that's Satan. And that's happening right now, today. It's a fact. Let's look at Acts chapter 1. I have that in my notes, but that's not what I want. So let's go to Acts 20. Acts chapter 20. No, oh, I meant Acts. I'm sorry. We'll go back to Acts. But I meant Acts 2. I have my notes Acts 1. That's Acts 2. Because we, what I was looking at, uh, 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 how, how powerful Satan is, how powerful it is, and I wanted to, I wanted to, I wanted to illustrate that. I wanted God to illustrate it by comparing what we read in John 11, 47 and 40. I wanted to compare that with what Peter says in Acts 2, verses 27 to 24. This is amazing. It's amazing what Paul says. I think I have a, a down in, in a study about it in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11. What, 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 uh, these, this, this same, this, these, these people were moving in on Paul's ministry, and Paul calls them the ministers of Satan. The ministers of Satan. Hmm? 
But can you imagine what these Pharisees, these Pharisees said that Jesus is performing these miracles. And we got to stop it. Because so many people, I'm paraphrasing of course, so many people beginning to believe it. Because the Pharisees, the religious leaders, knew that the signs that he was doing was proof of what he was saying. Confirm what he was saying. Acts 2. Chapter 2, verses 27. I'm really, no, I'm sorry. Acts 2, chapter 20, chapter 2. Chapter 2, verses 22 through 20, 24. I can't read my writing. Hey, ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, the man approved of God among you by miracles, wonders, and signs. That's the problem that the Pharisees and religious leaders had what we, what we read about in John 11. He said, well, then we've got to get rid of it. Because people are beginning to, to believe him. Him the sick race. There are people beginning to believe this man. And he's going to interfere with our hustle. It's, it's, that's happening today. you got to get rid of it. Don't believe, don't believe the Bible. They knew who he was. But he said, Romans going to come, and, and because he's drawing all these people away from him, by signs, they're going to get rid of him. They're going to cause a problem. And the Romans is going to upset the Romans. They don't want the problems in Palestine in that area. It's, you know, believe what you want to believe, just don't cause the problem. But he's causing the problem. So these religious religious said, we got to get rid of it. It's happening today. Acts chapter 2, verse 22. Now I'm going to go back to the front again. Ye men of Israel, ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God. How? Among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye also also, as ye yourselves also know. Whom God had raised up. Having loosed the pains of death because it was not possible that he should be the whole of heaven. Skip 23. Oh, that was, thank you. Him being delivered by determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken him by wicked hands and crucified and slain. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. He told you, he proved to you who he was. Why did you murder him? The same reason. <laughs> they murdered him because he was interfering with their house. That's why they murdered him. <laughs> they knew who he was, but I don't care. It's about our organization, it's about our church. They do it today. The religious league. Religious leaders. From Catholicism on the way to, to Jehovah's Witness. They're all doing the same thing. They're talking about a God, but they're talking about that the focus should be on their organization. Mm -hmm. And people go for it. Because people want to, their dreams to come true. They want their dreams to come true. 24. When God, whom God had raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holding of it. Of course, in verse 23 and 22 and 23, it's consistent, consistent, consistent with all of these man-made different views of the Bible. No matter what the Bible is, they call it the New World, the NIV, all of them were created and, and constructed for the focus to be changed from the direct relationship with God to a relationship with you. And then you can form a relationship with God through our organization. It's a fact. And it's not something that was created today. We see. It's always been. It was 
the game of Adam. A direct, Adam had a direct relationship with God. Satan told him it wasn't quite good enough. You can enhance it and be like Adam. And so show you how it's going. And it's happening today. Mm -hmm. But the simplicity of this understanding of this study is that what? <laughs> Israel had a king and they came with God. And so we, we want to be like the heathens. We want the God to say, the heathen God is like a heathen God of God. That's all they gave him, Samuel. God gave him Samuel. Mm -hmm. Okay, wait. <laughs> you got a God to give you everything. Uh, whatever you need. Uh, mm -hmm. We want to be like them. Right, right. Today, today is happening today. Mm -hmm. It's happening today. That woman was so seduced. I said, woman, to put that post on Facebook today about her prayer to, to the, her prayer to God is that he would heal with COVID, he would bless everybody who's sick, and all of that stuff. She's a Christian. But it's the prayer of Satan. It's a satanic prayer. This has been taught. She didn't realize what she's saying. But she's saying that she's denying that God is not a man he should like. If people are getting, still getting sick and dying from COVID, something is wrong. Okay. Something is wrong with the word of God. But Satan is so powerful, he can, he can make up. No, he didn't really mean that. This is simple. This is simple. It's about a direct relationship with God. That direct relationship with God is believing that having a plenary, complete view of the Word of God and believing that God is not a man they should lie. You don't need this. These man made views. You don't need that. Just believe God. Just believe God. And then when they don't, and think the people should get sick. Well, why people getting sick and healing this in the Bible? Then we have to find out why healing this in the Bible. Not, not go for this Alice in Wonderland stuff. <laughs> Just believe God is not a man that he should have. Why, why are all these people getting sick and bad and healing this in the Bible? Find out why it's in the Bible. Pharisees and religious leaders knew about miracles, but they didn't care. That's what they said. And Peter said, you, you men of Israel, he proved who he was. He said, I don't care to kill him. Why? Because he's interfering with our hustle. Mm -hmm. They're man-made religion. It's a fact. It's a fact. That's what he said. Uh -huh. You're doing all this stuff. Making all these doll houses, all of these things, and praying and humming, burning candles, you know, to have a, a more enhanced relationship with, with their God. How do you do that? Gospel of John, chapter 4. Gospel of John chapter 4, verse 24, and then we get the Gospel of John chapter 6. Gospel of John chapter 4, verse 24. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Either 
these views, different views of the Word of God. Is it true? Or is it the Word of God? All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. Either that's true, or you need me to tell you that it's almost true. So you need these different views. Even I don't, if it's an NIV, you have to tell me why is Israel in the Bible and why is Paul in the Bible? Why? Tell me why. Show me why. Not tell me why. Show me why. Go back to John 6, 63. Listen to these guys to find out how they work. The spill, they have a spill. A lot of them, these uh, televangelists, they have a spill. You know, what is the spill? What is the line of confidence that they give out? And, and how, how does it work? Yeah. And it's all con games. All con games are based on the desires of the victim. Find out the desire of the victim. And like we were saying, uh, a couple of Sundays, sadism, you take, you take the desires of the victim and you, can, and you have 90% proof information about how those desires can come true and you present those desires to the victim with 90% truth and 10% lie, deception, to gain the confidence of and you can manipulate the victim. You can seduce the victim into the direction you want them to go and have them believe in what you want them to believe because 90% of what you're saying is true. And that's the formula of power deception. Mm -hmm. All of those promises given to the nation is from But since they're in the Bible, what makes you think they're not for you too? They're for you also. You can harvest them. You're going to tell me that what God said is not for you? It's in the Bible. And people are terrified. And then you tell them, wow, they're not happening in their life. And why they're not happening in their life brings them back to your organization. That's the explanation. Bible study, you're not coming, not tiny enough. Sins in your life, you haven't confessed. Mm -hmm. And you get those resolutions through our organization. And you can't make God hurry up and do things and give you a blessing because he works, he works in his own time. I have a formula to go over here. He's he always on time, all this yeah. stuff. You know, it sounds childish. But it's satanically effective because it terrifies people. And it's, it's not a relationship with God, you see. It becomes a relationship with you and an organization, not a relationship with God. Go John 6, 6, 6, we didn't read. Mm -hmm. No, we didn't read. Let's read it. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh practiceth. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh practiceth. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. It is the spirit. They quicken, not the Holy Spirit, but the inner man spirit that quicken it, that's given life. The flesh promises nothing. Romans 7.
as very Hebrews related to selling uh, the law. And he quoted Romans 7, 14. I think it was 14 he quoted. But can't you, can you imagine this guy saying, well, he did. Romans chapter 7. It is the spirit that quickens, and the flesh profits nothing. In this guy, he quoted, he quoted Romans 7, 14. For you know that the law is spiritual, but I am God, so I don't understand. He says, you see, you still got to keep the law, because the law is spiritual. But what if you read to him Romans 7, 18? Which he did. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. Well, if no good thing dwelleth in my flesh, what good is me to try to keep the law? This is no good thing in my flesh. Why do you want me to try and keep the law? There's no good thing in my flesh. Why do you want me to try and keep the law? Because your organization wants me. Because it'll make you black and beautiful. <laughs> and that's the hustle. And then they have increased, increased. <laughs> and everything they preach and teach is a lie. But then I don't know, I just heard this, I uh, heard it on strong today, he was cold-blooded. <laughs> this morning? <laughs> well, you know, I like to hear when they write letters, they have legitimate letters. They don't have it like this uh, many in thing. They have the same, uh, all those other kind of men, they have one size sheet of paper and different people wrote a pile of letters. But all of the same size. Mm. And on the folder. <laughs> like he came in an envelope. Mm -hmm. But this guy, he, you know, uh, what is that? Uh, him and his son, uh, well, he died and his son taking a price. Shepherds, shepherds, something. Oh, okay. But anyway, they wrote his letters, and I like to listen to his answer to the letters. Someone wrote in this morning and said, uh, a, a, a Jew was black people. And he, so he believes in a, he believes in a, a pre-existing, and then what he calls an Adamic race, and then he said another race was created mm -hmm. of all people. But he says he wanted to explain to her about Adam. That was the second time his father told this lie the first time I heard it. And she said, a, a Jew, black people, so him telling her about Jews, he said, you have to go back to Adam. He says, Adam means red. Yeah. He says, so when a man gets excited or scared, his cheeks blush and it's turned to blood, rush his cheeks and his cheeks turn red. I said, you lie, go down, no. <laughs> so he said, that Adam was a white man and when his cheeks turn red, that's where he's in red. He's a red man. Because his organization teaches that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Chapel, Honor Murray. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, 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 that's what that organization, but it, that organization is like about uh, 12 or 1400 years old. It's old. British is where it is. It's all over. And then, you know, they, but they have different sets in that organization. And, uh, yeah. All of this stuff, all of this stuff, man made a hocus focus. Man or made hope is focused to get you to have a direct relationship with God when all you have to do is just believe God. Just that so. Either believe God or believe what man tell you God meant to say. Let's close in prayer, please. Father, thank you for well, all your 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 your, your preachers and teachers who who brought this information to my attention and and have strengthened me, and he enabled me to go in and strengthen myself uh, through your words. And I, I pray that, that 
people who just simply just believe you, you know, just open the Bible and believe you. Just believe the, the information that's in, the, in, the, in your, in your that you've given to the world. And uh, it, uh, it's free. And in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. God didn't mean what he said. Why didn't he just say what he meant? Well, I'm going to tell you what he meant. He's confused. Ain't that how it goes? Oh, did you? Well, that's it. It's something out of you can share with others. Why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you tell me? You didn't tell me. So they created different organizations. They call themselves Reform Jews, mm -hmm. Reconstruction Jews. Mm -hmm. So they have they they don't even believe. <laughs> 